All right, what's up guys? So last week I went into plots and this week I thought I'd go into curve fitting and more specifically the polynomial fitting and then uh, nonlinear fitting. So if all that sounds really cool to you, please give this video a like and subscribe and let's go into this. So you can see I have two libraries here. I have using polynomials and using LSQ fit. So these, these are the main two that we're looking at. I have my main function. This is for the nonlinear case, which we'll go into later. I have some X data, some Y data, and this is with noise. So it's kind of data or kind of random data. And then these two functions for the specific cases. So let's, let's go into the poly fit case first. Okay, so doing a polynomial fit is actually pretty simple. You can see here I have fit, X data, Y data, and then one. So this, this is actually pretty much all you have to do. You feed the, the data you need, and then you call the degree that you want. So I'm doing a first degree, second degree, and, a, and then a third degree. And then it fits it and it produces this function that correlates with it. Now I'm not gonna go too much of what this is outputting. It's an actual object, it's called a polynomial object in this case. And you can actually do a lot of cool stuff with it. But in here, we're I'm just gonna focus on fitting. Now uh, here I just have another X range and it's me using the start and end points of the X data, but you can see I have a lot more points in here. And that's just to check if my fit is robust. And then this is me plotting everything out. So I'm plotting the data as a scatter and then I'm doing the three fits. So let's run this. Okay, so you can see we got the fits and we can see they're not very good. And that's not the polynomial fits problem. This is actually just because we're we're trying to fit polyno a polynomial to exponential case. So you can see my data is exponential. All the points starts really high, then it flattens out and just continues off in that case. While the first case, it does the linear and it tries to fit the points up here, but then also the points over here. So it's having trouble. Then it tries to do the second degree. And I mean, it got a couple more points. It got this one and this one, but still having a rough time. And then we try to do the third degree and it's trying a little bit more to get. So if we had more powers, it can maybe fit better and better, but you can see because it's exponential, it's, it's not doing very good, but we can do a piecewise case. This is just to show, show more of how to, how to do a polynomial fit if you had to for this. So you can see that this, this bit is kind of cubic. And then this is pretty linear, right? This is pretty straight. So let's do the piecewise case. Okay, so what I have here now is p fit one and p fit two. And because I'm treating it as a piecewise function now, you can only see I'm using part of the data for each case. So for this one to five, which is around 2.5 ish, uh, that's gonna be the cubic function. And then I'm gonna do a p fit two and it's gonna go from five to the end. So that'll be the linear case. And then I'm doing the same exact thing as last time. Now you can see I have 50 here. That's because the X lin is a lot bigger. So I had scaled it up and one to 50 is about 2.5 again from the data. And I just wanted to make sure it fits decently well. Okay, and we got a little bit better of it. Now there's, there's definitely this problem right here. And that's just because I'm being a little bit lazy and don't want to figure out actually where the two points cross. But you can see because I made it more piecewise, the polynomial fit now did a lot better. This is the linear cases fitting this, this pretty fine. And then this is the cubic and it was able to fit these points pretty fine. And that's all well and good. So that, that is a polynomial fit. And if you have polynomial cases or polynomial data, works pretty well. Okay, so let's look into the nonlinear case now. We have this initial block of code and we have this p naught, which I define as a guess, and the model is the function we're trying to fit. Now, in the endlet fit function, I'm feeding everything into this. So I'm feeding the model function, the x data, the y data, and the guess. So let's go down to that. So in here, you can see I'm calling this curve fit function. Now this comes from the LSQ fit and I'm feeding the model. So that's that function, the data, and that P naught. 
Now in this case, when curve fit is fitting the model, it's not going to spew out a function like fit for polynomial did. Instead, it's going to spew out these parameters. And there's actually more to this nlib fit. You can see I have nlib fit dot param. And there's, there's more objects in there. But param is the, the parameters that fit to the model. Now what it's doing is you give it this peanut, this guess, and with the data that you also give it, it performs an algorithm and adjusts the data or the, the, the parameter values ever so slightly going through the data until it fits well. And that's how we get this pfit. And just to show, we're going to print off this pfit just to show what it is. And we have xlin just like before. And we have scatter. So I'm plotting the initial model. So this is with my p naught. And then I'm going to plot the fitted model. And then I'm also going to print those two parameter values. OK, so we got a couple of things from this. Now you can see the initial model with that 0 0.5, 0 0.5. It's really bad. And that makes sense. It was just a guess. And now this function is fitted pretty well. And if we look at the parameters, we have 0 0.993, OK, and then 1.98. Now, if you looked above, so I'm going to close this. Up here, when I made the random data, I used 1 and 2, which you can see it fit that pretty well. It got pretty close, actually. And that's that's how the, the model works. It, uh, or the nonlinear, the non nonlinear fit works. Now going more into the algorithm itself, I may say for another video, it's a bit more in depth on the math part, but this is the actual curve fit, the model itself. Now being aware of how to use curve fit correctly, you have to define this T value or this like T or X or whatever, but this first input is the independent variable. So if you had a sign of x or f of x function, this is your x. Um, and then this p is that tuple or that array of values that define all those constants. Now, if I wanted to define another model, just for example, let's see, t, p again, and maybe I wanted to do a sign function. So times sign dot. Um, p of 2 times t. OK, and then maybe there's another p of 3 over here. All right, and you can define as many parameters as you need, depending on how complex your function is. But you need to make sure you follow this syntax so that curve fit works with your model correctly. And I'm just calling it model just to give it that. You can name it whatever you want. Cool. So there are definitely other fits. There. There's um, Fourier transforms as well. I'm not going into that as well because that is also pretty heavy in the math to actually describe even high level what it does. But polynomial fits and nonlinear fits tend to be the bread and butter of undergrad, and they're definitely skills to pick up. So hopefully you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next video.